guarantee you I'm going with the Gospels. Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord, as we exalt. And Lord, we speak about the devil, and I said last week, the devil's going to be kicking our butt. Because Lord, I am teaching something that's in the Bible, it's not taught by churches, not taught from the pulpits. And Lord, just realize to me a week later, yeah, the devil's angry. And there is a devil. And Lord, I pray for this Bible study now, Lord God, help me to be right, help me to be correct, help me not to be in the flesh. And Lord, already I pray tomorrow for the farmer's market, Lord. To your honor and glory, for Jesus' sake we pray, amen. Now, being the first John, like they said, we're taking a little break from John. Because where we're at in John, we're at the temptations of Jesus. Now, the Gospel of John doesn't record it. But, <coughs> forgive me for my throat, because it goes dry. And, and, um, but this is the next thing that happens in Jesus' life, and we may do that as we go further in the Gospels. If Some things John doesn't record, some things the other Gospels don't record. So, we're taking a little side note of Jesus and the temptation, we're looking at 1 John 2.16. And we'll start in verse 15. Love not the world. The world does not love Jesus, and the world does not love you. Even if they tell you they love you, they don't. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, capital F, is not in him. If you don't love, if you love the world, God doesn't love you. Even if you are a Christian, that's written to Christians. That ain't written. That's not written to unsaved people. That's written to Christians. You love the world. You know, it's that father. Yeah, he's my son. I don't talk about him much. For all that's in the world, this is why you don't love the world. But this is what people love in the world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, back to verse 15, but is of the world. And we've been looking at the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and we saw that in our great, great, great grandmother Eve. We saw the, now these three tools of Satan, there are no other tools. It's the eyes, it's the flesh, and it's your pride. That's where God works. I mean, the, the devil, that's where the devil works. And those are only, you realize, we saw an Eve. That is the second human being ever to be on this earth. And the devil used the verse here. Three tools in his toolbox he uses to destroy mankind. Now today we're going to look at 2 Samuel 11. We're going to look at a man that's highly favored of God. We're going to look at the king of Israel. And you say, oh boy, king. Highly exalted of God. In the family of Jesus Christ. You say, would a king be in the same shoes as Eve? We are. We are. Second Kings 11, we're going to talk about, when you mention king of Israel, your, your eyes are going to go to Solomon or David. We're going to look at David. And we're going to see the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And I, I warned us last week, these are the same things in ours. Well, like I said, Satan can, well, I should not say cannot. Satan will not tempt me with alcohol. Alcohol has no bearing on me. But there are other things which I'm not going to tell you. You don't need to tell others. You tell God. There are things that, hey, I'm not interested. And Satan knows that. And there are things in our life that Satan goes, ha ha, I got you. And it could be lust of the eyes. It could be the lust of the flesh. Or it could be the pride of life. And there's nothing else to look at when it comes to our sins. And we saw that in Eve, now in David, 2 Samuel 11, 2. Verse 1. 
And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle. There seems to be in the Bible, in the Bible time, all right, mark your calendars, we're going to war. That's what it seems to say. We have a date, we're going to go to battle. That David sent Joab and his servants with him in all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarries still at Jerusalem. Here's the pride of life. I'm the king. I don't need to go. And again, I said last week, talk about the presidents, plural, presidents, plural. I don't know how far it goes back. If you want to look it up for me, give me the name. The last president that went into war. I know when we had the Vietnam conflict. I know when we had the Korea. I know our president at that time didn't go into war. I don't know what their names are. I don't pay attention to that stuff. But there was a time that the presidents went into war. The first president of the United States, George Washington, fought the wars. David said, I don't need to go. I'm the king. I'll give the orders. There are men in... I, I'm the pastor. I, I've even had pastors. I've had pastors. I won't give their names. I'm the pastor of this church. You don't like it. You didn't get permission from me to do that. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I forgot. I thought you were a pastor, not God. And it's the elevation of... It's me, who I am. You see all the abbreviations before my name and all the abbreviations before? You see what position I have? You see, when Daytona Beach is harassing the street, you know, we're in charge of the city. No, I'll tell you what's in charge is the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C., what the Supreme Court justices say. And the Supreme Court justices say, well, street preaching is illegal. God said go. So David, the king, says, I don't need to go to war. And the verse says, when kings go to battle. So the Bible says, yes, you do, David. You know what another prideful thing is? Well, the Bible says it, but I don't have to do that. The Bible says, study and show that. I don't have to read my Bible. The Bible says, go to all the world. I don't have to witness the people. There's pride in when the Bible says to do something, and you don't do it. There is pride when the Bible says not to do something. Sin, and you sin. I can get control of this in my life. Me, I know when to... That's pride. That's a sin. That's of the devil. Verse 2, And it came to pass at the evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman walking herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now let me tell you right now, verse 2, let, let me attack. Does it say she's naked? It does not say she's naked. I've heard messages, oh, Bathsheba was there naked and flaunting. She's washing herself. She could have been washing her hair. She could have been washing her hands. She could have been washing her feet. It says washing herself. You know what the other problem with some people in their pro they read more into the Bible than what's there. One guy got up, well, name it, he baptized himself, and you know, all his army was having a water pool party. That's not in the Bible. Shut up. Teach what's in the Bible. And I have heard I have heard messages out of my two ears when they were both good and working. You know, Bathsheba, she's flaunting her naked butt. She said she's washing herself. Washing hair, washing hands, washing the dishes. So, but the Bible says she's very beautiful to look upon. Now, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, where do you think now we're going to go? Well, look what it said, verse 2. He saw a woman. There's a lust of the eyes. That's what's wrong with pornography. I see. Now, that's not the sin. You, I, I see women all the time. David saw many women. 
But it says that she was very beautiful to look upon. All right, my eyes have seen more of that woman than I should have seen. And Jesus said, Whosoever looked upon a woman to lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with her. So it's more than just, oh, okay, there's a woman washing her hands or whatever. Even if she was naked, there's a woman over there washing, I'm going to look the other way. But the Bible said she was very beautiful to look upon, so guess what? It's now in the heart. And I'll tell you, that for, for anybody, a man looking at a woman or a woman looking at a man, it's that second look. I mean, there's a story, a man's walking down the street, and he's holding hands with his girlfriend, and, she, and he goes, you're just such a beautiful woman. And she said, well, my sister behind us is much beautiful than I. And then he turns to look. Yeah, you, you just sunk your battleship. What are you doing turning and looking? And David sent and inquired after the woman. Go find out who she is. It's more than a lust. It's now the lust of the eyes. I want to find out who that woman is. Eve is staring at that fruit. <laughs> I wonder what it tastes like. Why would God say I can't eat that? David's like, ooh, I won't. And I won't get into what David's probably thinking. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Now, David, she's married. Get your eyes off her. That's a warning to David. Well, here's her father, but here's her husband. And David sent messengers and took her. We've got the lust of the eye. Woo-hoo, that woman is beautiful. I want to know who she is. Well, she's married. Now we got the lust of flesh. Go get her for me. Why would he go send for her? There was no need for Bathsheba to be there. I'm telling you, I'll tell you one thing too. There's people that put Bathsheba in a bad light of this. I look at it, the fact is, this is David the king calling for a woman. You did not tell the king no. The king has more authority than the president. If the king says, off with your neck, off with your neck. She's going before the king and the, the king called you. You don't say no. So you've got to get Americanism out of the Bible. And you've got to realize monarchs, when monarchs reign, they reign. If they did not like your appearance, Look at Mordecai, and the second ruler, Haman, of the nation, did not like because Mordecai didn't treat him like he said, I want him dead. And when that man angered the king, the king said, put him on the gallows. They did it, instantly. So David sent messages and took her. She came unto him. That's flesh joining flesh. There's the lust of the flesh. He laid with her. That's flesh joining flesh. So we got the lust of the eyes, we got the lust of the flesh, and we got the pride of life. There it is. It wasn't a fruit like Eve. Eve wasn't tempted with another man. There was no other man to be tempted. So when you go reading through the Bible, uh, don't go be looking for a forbidden fruit in your life, hanging from a tree and a serpent come walking up to you. It's not, that ain't going to happen. And don't expect, well, I, I won't go walking on my rooftop. And, and no, you could be looking at your computer. I tell you, back in the 80s, it was more, it's dang, the internet is totally dangerous. But in the 80s, you could be just looking at your computer, looking at something good, and they had a thing called pop-ups. And the pop-ups would actually show you naked women or men, and they, the computer knew who you were. That was dangerous. Now that you can block that junk. But David was the king. He didn't need to go to war, though the Bible said it's time for kings to go forth into battle. David took a look at that woman and acknowledged, hoo hoo, she's a woman. He was told that she was, she was a married woman. And David, with the flesh, 
made it with them. Now, we don't need to look at the rest of the story. Because that's the subject of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Again, that is the danger of pornography. That's the danger of advertising. You can't go anywhere. When, when you go into Walmart, and this was fairly new, and I was, in, I was in the retail store business, when you see those on the end of the, the, the shelf, you see that video monitor playing the product, those places play an astronomical amount of money to Walmart to put their ad there. Because you're, you can't avoid them, they're there. They got one ad over by the soda, which we go get soda. And as soon as you walk by it, it senses you walking by it. Hey, would you like? That's advertisers attacking your, your sense of the flesh. Ooh, I guess I need it. And well, I gotta take a look at that. There's there is a reason. Like I said, I studied for a while uh, advertising. There is a reason why products out there, from soda to soap to whatever they're trying to, the colors they use. Red is an excellent color because it attracts your attention. And each of the colors of the rainbow has an attraction to you through your eyes of your emotions. And you can look it up online to find out what those colors are. Mm -hmm. There are some colors that say, hey, look at me. And there are some colors that say, well, I like that. So when we're in the realm of advertising, we're in the realm of television set, when we're in the realm of billboards, when we're in the realm of, 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 of newspaper ads or magazine ads, we are in the realm of the devil. I could never understand as a man, and I, I'm into cars, I don't get crazy about cars, I will go to a car show and I will look at the engines and stuff like that. I, do. I can't understand when I open up a magazine and there's a car ad and there's a half-naked woman on that hood. Why? What does she have to do? She don't come with it. That's for the man to take his eyeballs. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I mean... There are two chicken places here in Daytona Beach and what they have the women to wear for the men's fancies. And I, we used to have a ministry by one. It'd be amazing, the whole family, the, the husband, the wife, and the kids were going, uh, that's disgusting. Mm. The lust of the flesh is, I got to have it. And that's another act. Go for it. Go for the gusto. Just do it. That's advertisement for the flesh to say, I want it, I got to have it, I need it. And like I said, when I work for a certain restaurant, I work second shift. I close the store in the middle of the night. And when people come out, I mean, they get in their bathrobe and they probably still have their fuzzy little slippers. I just sold this ad for you for your sandwich, I've got to have it. And it was always amazing because when I served it, I always served it without it being wrapped. So when I handed it through the drive-thru, they would, and their reaction was, that's not what it looks like on television. No, because television puts all kinds right. of gooey, gunky, dookie, that's not what you're looking at. You're not going to find that hamburger in that fast food restaurant looking like the hamburger that you saw in the ad. So, That's quite interesting. Matthew chapter 4. Now the devil attacked our first mother, Eve. The devil attacked the king. You take every man and woman in the Bible and the devil attacked them in those three ways. And he could use those three ways to attack, like I said, the devil, I, I could walk over here and the devil could lay out all the liquor he wants to on this ta table and seat with a big old neon sign, free. I'll go sit over there. I don't want that. Don't open it because this stuff smells like pee to me. 
Okay? I'll give you one innocent thing. I'll, I won't tell you my whole secret life. The devil will put somebody in there smoking a cigarette, and I'll be walking by. I'll be, I get that, that little extra. Ugh. Especially if it's a pipe or a cigar. I get that little extra, I'm not supposed to, and the devil says, I, I, I got you there. And you've got in your life, and you don't need to tell me, you need to tell God, and God knows, and the devil knows, you not know. And you got to say no to the devil. And you got to realize, well, I, I have a craving that no one else has. What three tools have we just learned? And it's only the same three tools. The devil ain't going to pull a new tool out of that toolbox. He ain't got one. He doesn't need one. He's been using it since Eve. So I said every man in the woman in the Bible has been tempted with the same temptations. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up in the spirit of the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Oh, you believe Jesus is God? You believe Jesus is without sin? Guess who? The, guess who's going to pull his tools out on Jesus? And when he was fasting forty days and forty nights, he after was hungry. When the tempter came to him, verse five, just real quick. Then the devil. Don't you dare ever to say the devil won't tempt me. He tempted Jesus. Mm -hmm. And friend, we already knew that Jesus would win the battle. Evidently, Satan doesn't have that understanding. And Satan actually believed it. So you got a temptation in your life that the devil used and the devil used. you got to go to the Lord Jesus and say, Jesus, remember the tactics he used on you? Well, he's going after me now. And let's see how Jesus does. Verse 3. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. What temptation is that? The pride of life. You dare to be God? Look at it. He's a Jehovah Witness. You dare to say you're God? If you're really God, see those stones over there? Make yourself some bread because you're hungry. That's the pride of life. That's the same pride of life he used on Eve, the same pride of life he used on David, Samuel, and all. I mean, they weren't all hunger. But he, Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Boom! What did Jesus do? He came back with Scripture. You gotta learn scripture. You want to overcome the temptations of the devil, you gotta learn scripture. You gotta memorize scripture. You gotta study your Bible. So you're not made ashamed by the devil. Then the devil taking them up to a holy city and said it's on the pinnacle of the temple, they're in Jerusalem. And said to them, If thou be the Son of God. Cast thyself down, for it's written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and their hands he shall bear thee up, at least any time they'll dash thy foot against the stone. Alright, so the bread. Let's look at the temptation. Now, if you be God, alright, the bread. You're hungry? Turn the bread to stone. That's the lust of the flesh. Come on, Jesus, make yourself some bread. Come on. Now, what's wrong with making yourself bread? That's not the time for Jesus to be making bread. You dare to be God prior to what? All right, you're hungry? You're so hungry? Make some bread. Lust of the flesh. There it is. Jesus attacked with the word of God. Now the devil says, he's given, char he's given his angels charge concerning thee, that their hands they should bear thee up, at least any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Okay. That 
that's God giving the angels charge. There's the pride of life. Control the angels. No one else can control the angels but God. I want to look at something here. But I just want to show you a nut. Side note, but let me make sure it's the right verse. This is not my study Bible. Probably couldn't read my study Bible where we're at. It's all marked up. But let me take a look at this for a minute. Just a side note. These pages I can't turn. Go to Psalm 91. I'm going to take a little side note here. 91. I'll take a little rabbit trail. Because this is interesting. I'm going to show you something. Psalm 91, verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Does that sound familiar? Satan quoted scripture. You know what Jesus did? Jesus quoted scripture to the devil. You know what the devil did? He came back and brought scripture himself. Remember the scripture he brought to Eve? Yeah, as God said, look what the devil missed. The devil missed the second advent. Verse 13. Thou, Jesus, shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under her feet. That's the devil there, and that's Jesus Christ getting victory. The devil didn't quote that part, did he? The, de the devil is able to quip, quote scripture, but he only will quote scripture to your deceivement and his betterment. So if you're really God, tell the angels to protect you. Verse 7, Jesus said to him, It is written again, Scripture, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's exactly what the devil is doing. And that don't stop the devil. And the devil look, Jesus is quoted Scripture, that's Deuteronomy 6.16. He just told the devil, don't tempt the Lord thy God, and the devil take us off to his... You think the devil's going to listen to you? He didn't even listen to Jesus. Jesus is God, right? Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, and the devil, and the devil take us off to a singing high mountain. Oh, it also says here... And the devil taketh him up to a seen high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. Lust of the eyes. We've seen the lust of the flesh make some bread. We've seen the pride of life if you're God. Now we've seen lust of the eyes. He showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. That's the same thing the devil challenges you and me with. That's the same thing the devil challenged Eve with. That's the same thing David, Samuel, Daniel, the mayor, the president, the prime ministers, the queen of England. That's the same thing. There are people we've never heard of that's in this world, and the devil uses the same three tools that he uses on them. As much as your neighbor, as much as your grandma, as much as your mother, as much as you. Those three, you use them upon Jesus. I can't get victory. Jesus did. Now let's read on. Show him all the kingdoms of the world, lust of the eye, and the glory thereof. He said, all these things will I give thee, pride of life. Wouldn't you like to be the ruler? Wouldn't you like to be a president? I won't shut up. That verse right there is why I say there are people in politics and the devil put them there. Because he said, all these things will I give thee, all the kingdoms. If thou fall down and worship me, and Jesus says, you're a liar, Satan, shut up. And, and 
No, Jesus did not rebuke that statement. You know what the devil said? I can give you these kingdoms if you fall down and worship me. That goes whole to 2020. It could be the 2020 election, whoever is voted in as the next president of the United States. It could be because they bowed themselves before the devil and said, I worship you. It could be. Or God says, I make alive, I kill, I, I give power, I take power thereof. But I'll get off voting. And then said Jesus unto them, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written scripture. Now this is Deuteronomy 6.13. Thou, who is he talking to? He's talking to the devil. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall... Jesus came back with scripture speaking to the devil saying... The only one you're supposed to worship, Satan, is God. I've heard preachers from the pulpit with my two ears when they work. I'm going to get old smutty face. We're going to attack old smutty face. Oh, no, you're not. The devil didn't even listen to Jesus. And the devil leaveth him. And behold, angels came and mis ministered on him. That's what the devil told Hey, let, let the angels come. No, that came later. That came later. So, that's that. So what we have here, and we'll look at a couple more places. We'll be done. Jesus was 40 days and 40 nights with no food and drink. Eve was in the garden with all the fruit in the, fruit in the world. And the appetite of Eve was the fruit. The appetite of, of Jesus was he had no food 40 days and 40 nights. The appetite of David was a female. That doesn't have to be food. Now the tempter, it says, verse 3, the tempter came to him. And we'll look at four places in the scripture and we'll be done. 1 Corinthians 7, 5. The tempter, because we're talking about temptation. And next week we'll look at temptation. And we'll get back to John, I think. We get back to John. I have listed it. I don't know why I did it twice. Alright, 10 to 8. 1 Corinthians 7 3. I don't know why I'm being so slow. 7 5. That terrible thing. Man. I'm going to glory to get a brand new body. I hope I get brand new handwriting. All right, about marriage, 1 Corinthians 7, 5. You wouldn't think the devil would try to get into a marriage, would you? No, no. Defraud ye not one another, husband and wife. Uh, the context of that is sexual relation between husband and wife. Don't you tell your husband no, and don't you tell your wife no. Except to be for a consent of time. You know what? A, you know one of the fasts that a husband and wife can have in the Bible. We're not going to do that for five days. We're not going to do that for three days. And the Bible says set a time. There are probably marriage couple. We won't do it on, on a Saturday night into Sunday because it's tomorrow's church. Set a time, but. That you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempts you not for your inconsistency. You know what happens? Notice how tempts. Satan tempts you. When you've got a marriage couple that defrauds each other of the marriage bed, 
Satan is going to bring that lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the lust of the eyes into that, that marriage person. Some cases, adultery was because of the spouse in the lack there. Some cases, not all. But there is the devil coming in a marriage tempting. As much as he came to Eve, as much as he came to David, as much as he came to Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 3, 5. Do you know what the modern church is not teaching today? They're not telling you where the devil is. They're not telling you where the devil You know what? In the modern churches today, it could be the devil that's in that pulpit. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11. It may not be a godly person in that, in that pulpit. Well, I've heard of them. 1 Thessalonians 3, 5. Second person, that's why it was weird. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. At least by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor be in vain. Paul's worried about the tempter coming up. As a Christian, Paul worried about other Christians being tempted by the tempter. Don't think it's not going to happen to you. And I have heard morons say, oh, it will never happen to me. 1 Timothy 6.9 1 Timothy 6.9 More to the right. And he's only going to tempt you with three tools. You better know what tools are in your life. First Timothy 6, 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. That's a trap. You have a hunger and a love for money. The devil, that's the, lust, that's, the lust, that's the lust of the flesh, money. The devil says, all right, I'll bring you all the money you want. And it will destroy you. And there's many, many saved and lost people out there that have been tempted to, I'm going to play the lottery, I'm going to gamble, I'm going to do, I got this scam. I was not really a scam, but I... What is the foundation of all lotteries, gambling, and scams that make you rich? Here it is, the tempter. And that's the devil. He's out to deceive you. He's out to lie to you, John 8, 44. Not only is Satan the liar, he's the father of lies. And if he comes quoting scripture to you, don't be surprised if he quotes scripture, but he doesn't quote it correctly. When you quote scripture back to him, you better quote it correctly. Lord God, the Father, this lift to you, Lord God, that the devil is real and he's out there and he's out to get us. He's out to steal the worship of God. Protect us, wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse us. Help us to know his devices. Lord God, for Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. 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 Next week we'll get into temptation.